Hannah's backyard. So this is week number seven. Yes, week number seven in the garden and things are really starting to ramp up. And I've also been more strict on the watering because we're still not getting water or rain like naturally. I've been actually watering a lot this year. Um, as you can see behind me, this green strip, that's where the water's getting. So the rest of the lawn is starting to get really yellow. Um, but anyway, today, not only are you gonna get a garden tour, but I'm going to be harvesting the last three of these purple cauliflower. I'm hoping you'll be able to see them. And um, I've actually been, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna preserve these three. I riced one, which was super good. I put some basil, parsley, cilantro, you know, a couple different herbs in there, um, and kind of sauteed it in some butter. So that was super good. Uh, I have another one I've been eating raw, and then a, a third one I gave away. Uh, but these three, I'm gonna rice one, um, and I think just freeze the florets. And now, then I gotta decide what I'm gonna do with the section. I'm thinking of starting new cauliflower um, and having a second batch, but not sure what to do with them once they're gone. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Oh, and uh, my drink. This is my basil tea lemonade, and I made a little bit of a little video um, making this. So I'm gonna attach that at the end of this video. Um, so yeah, stay tuned to check that out. Otherwise, come along and enjoy the garden tour. Basically, all I'm using is just a kitchen knife. Uh, I would like to have some actual garden knives, but I haven't gotten there yet. This works just fine. Huh? So all I'm doing is cutting all the leaves off, and then I'm just sticking the knife in under at the base. Once I get it inside, I'm going to put it in a sink with some salt water for about 20 minutes just to get, if there's any bugs in it, um, that kind of stuff, just to get them out. And then I'll go ahead and preserve them the way I choose. But once I get this, I'll kind of get all these leaves off. I'll show it to you. It's a beauty. This is what all of them have looked like. And even last year when I grew these, they looked the same. Yeah, see there's, I don't know if you'll be able to see it or not. This is why I soak it. Oh, there's just a little tiny worm. So soaking it just kind of takes all that away. Um, gets it out of there. So yeah, anyway, beautiful thing. So I'm gonna keep going here. getting three. This one is the biggest. Um, I think I'm going to try to weigh them. So we kind of see. Okay, so I got three really nice cauliflower here. Um, I'm gonna end up weighing them when I get home or in the house. So they're, this one's big. Pretty excited about this harvest. Um, like I said last year, ooh, I will absolutely always grow that. I should, that sounds better. <laughs> um, it does so much better than the white and it's just so pretty and it tastes really good. So I'm always gonna grow that kind of, I've had really good success with it. 
But anyway, keep coming along. Um, the garden's not weeded this week, so try to look past that. Um, but it is what it is, so come along. Okay, so I ended up getting two pans of the cauliflower blanched. Um, I'm not sure if you're picking it up, but it almost is a blue color now. And then I ended up doing three bags, which is a pound each of cauliflower rice. So it was a total of nine pounds when I brought them in. So that's pretty good for three cauliflowers. The heaviest one was 3.995, so almost a four pound head. So this week, the front of my garden, the flowers, um, the burgundy color lilies have bloomed. And these are a day lily. They're kind of, they're not really opened yet because it's pretty early in the morning, but that's gotta get separate. That's a huge bush. Um, and the ones in the back, which are kind of a reddish orange, are starting to open this week. I have lots of roses on that side. Strawberries are doing pretty good. Um, not as good as other years, but being that it's a dry year, I'm not that surprised. I chopped some peppermint but I think the whole thing's gotta just get cut back this is huge I did not know it was gonna get so big and I'm not happy with its location right in the middle of my path um, but it's it's there now so it's got the little bell-shaped flowers but I'm thinking I might cut this columbine back, um, cut my sage back, now that it went, you know, it flowered and whatnot, just to cut it back, and um, my echinacea, it flowered this week. I didn't know these were so tall either. I mean, they're over my hips high, so it's a really good, healthy plant. Um, let's see. My little calamio. That's growing. Yeah, aren't they just the prettiest? The garlic is getting there. We're at two sets of leaves. Going on the third right now. So I'm thinking another two weeks I should be harvesting this. Uh, I have to reweed everything, but my onions are really getting some nice size to them. Finally, onions are like that, at least for me, where they're like they're not growing, they're not growing, and then bam, they're bulbed. <laughs> um, I have picked a couple carrots. It looks like I have a couple that might be wanting to go to seed. And those are the yellow ones. I picked a couple of the yellow ones. They were super good. Um, a little small yet. So a couple more weeks for those. We're going to be going through a huge transition here in this garden, I think, like really soon. Um, I have to pull out my spinach, but I'm the reason I'm not is because I've been trying to feed it to my chickens. And I just picked a lot of all my cauliflower and stuff, so they have a lot of that type of material in their coop already um but yeah i have to get rid of the spinach my lettuce is bolting uh so that should be going too and it kind of i would like i need to start new stuff from seed cilantro you know that's bolted but i'm just letting that sit there for the pollinators oh my basil sorry about the lighting it's probably a little hard this morning but it's looking really well. The corn is as tall as I am now. So, you know, 5'3", five, 5'4". Five, Maybe even a little bit taller in some spots. And I don't know if this is a good thing or not. I don't... 
Next year, what I think I'm going to do is put three rows of corn on one side and three rows of corn on the other and keep the path in the middle so it doesn't shade out anything else. I did want it for shade, but these tomatoes just aren't growing as much as they should be. So in the afternoon, this building over here gives them shade too. So I think they're just getting shaded out a little too much for the tomatoes. Um, yeah. So my kale is looking really good. Phenomenal. I actually got to pick a whole bunch and I should freeze some and cook some and all of the other, all of that. Isn't that really pretty sunflower? These are the ones that came up on their own, so I'm not quite sure what variety. They're probably just cross-pollinated with something else. You have to excuse my allergies today. Uh, my peppers are really starting to get nice and bushy now. And there are a few little bells coming up on here. tomatoes here let me go to the other side oh it broke off so now I'm waiting for this sucker to, to grow because I've been pruning all the other suckers off yeah so this is my cherry tomato so normally I have huge cherry tomatoes there's another sucker right there so hopefully that'll keep growing um this is a green zebra you can see oh i just splashed myself in the face the coloring on these tomatoes that are coming this is also a green zebra and now this one there's just very few there's a couple coming and these two are the amish gold i'm not really seeing too much on them I'd really like it to grow up more. Um, they're, just, they're just so far behind. And then this one came up on its own. I'm not sure what it is. It's directly under the trellis, so I'm letting it grow. I'm like, why not? I gotta start training this, or maybe even hold it over here. So you can see the difference of the height over here where they get full sun from the morning. Uh, to the later afternoon. So they're very much taller. So it's something I have to consider next year. So this is the Amish paste. It's a pretty healthy looking plant. I'm not seeing, there's some, um, I think on this side, there's a couple of tomatoes there. This one's looking really nice. That's another Amish paste that I broke off. So that one explains why it's so far behind. Yeah, um, these ox hearts are finally starting to do something. They were very slow this year. Um, let's go back over this way. The onions are really doing well here. And my dill's flowered and so I have to harvest some of the dill part and then maybe a couple of the flowers. And over here are all my hot peppers. They are really starting to bush out. I think these are looking really good. I like this spot for them. Everything's, they're really spaced out though. Um, but yeah, really happy with that. This tunnel is finally starting to fill in. The pumpkins are really starting to take off. So these are my Tiger artisan cherry, or well, they're kind of like a cherry. You can see the shape of them here. And they're getting a lot of tomatoes on them. They're not growing up as much as I wanted, but they're getting there, so we'll keep them going. The celery's looking really well. Finally, I've been watering a lot at night. Um, start picking some and using them in like stir fry and stuff yeah here's some jalapeno plants this is the other side of the tomatoes 
The lighting is probably a little bit better. Um, cucumbers, they're starting to grow. I gotta keep directing up because they just want to kind of sprawl. I have a few, I picked a couple zucchinis already. I have a few more. There's actually like a big one in here. I don't know where it came from. If you can see it, it's kind of like right down in there. So I had to come pick that guy. They got crowded with these sunflowers. I gotta remember space. But I was trying to get a lot in here and yeah, um, this is what happens. <laughs> so these are the pumpkins. They're going pretty insane. Uh, yeah, so I'm probably gonna end up letting this one kind of sprawl throughout the garden. But I still want to direct it up because the whole point is to fill the trellis. So these are the melons. They're finally starting to kind of kick it up a notch. The Kajaris, they're, that one's just falling down. I gotta redirect it. I watered last night, so I don't know if the water kind of knocked it down and whatnot, but they're finally starting to do something. That's just a sunflower patch. This is the part that's doing nothing, which I kind of wish the pumpkins were here. <laughs> I could put, I don't know, something else here, I guess. And these are the Grandpa Jungs flower mix. I should have really spaced them more. Zinnias. These are starting to flower. This is the candy cane stripe. So they're just starting. And the teddy bear, I think they're teddy bear sunflowers. They're finally, they're growing a little bit higher. But yeah, these, I just love zinnias. So pretty. I'm gonna come around. I picked all the cabbage. I left two of like the roots in to see if um, I'll get a couple more small heads. I have a little bit, a few little things. I don't know if they'll come up or not because I kind of disrupted the roots a little bit, pulling them off. Um, now the Romanesco, I pulled it out. Um, it was doing nothing. There's one head here that is doing something. So that's the only one. None of the other ones are doing anything, so I pulled them. I'm not gonna grow them ever again. Future Hanner, you remember this, do not grow Romanesco. It's just a big waste of space. Um, when I was pulling them out, I did find the Stomatillo. It came up from last year, but I don't really think it's gonna do anything. It was shaded out quite a bit from the plants, and also it's just one, so. Here's the broccoli. We got a couple of heads here, which I'm gonna have to pick because we've had such excessive heat that everything's just bolting. The wild pumpkins, <laughs> red cabbage, Brussels sprouts. I'm starting to kinda prune them a little bit. You can see I actually have some Brussels sprouts coming up. Oh, I'm so excited for cucumbers. They're just not coming fast enough. This is where my um, cauliflower was. So I gotta figure out what to do there. But yeah, well, that's pretty much it. So I hope you guys have a good one and we'll see you on week number eight. This is week seven of the garden. It's getting to get pretty big. But next week, everything should look a lot different. The lettuce should be gone. Um, and I'm hoping to have, I'm gonna start stuff from a seed, but in uh, like a seed tray to kind of keep them watered and stuff a little bit better. But yeah, we'll see.
So the straw flowers I started from seed are blooming. I just love them. There's an ant on that. But very cool. Fun. That one's almost all the way open. Not quite yet. So I am making some basil tea lemonade. Um, so the first step is to go outside and get yourself a bunch of basil. So I have blue spice basil, purple petra basil, that's what color that is there, that's what that is right there, the purple stuff, and some cinnamon basil, I did add a few sprigs of peppermint, and some lemon balm. Okay, so we have the hot water added, and now we're just gonna kind of set the lid on it. I'm not gonna do it tight, and let this steep. Okay, so I got it put into a bigger container. Got strained, all the basil and stuff is out. I added some honey, most a little bit more than half a cup. I'm gonna add two lemons and then the lemonade. And you can see it changed colors again. And do it over the mix. And now time for the lemonade. So I didn't make my own lemonade. I can do that, but for now this is all that I have. And I'm just gonna add it. Okay. Turned into a really pretty pink. So now, I will let it cool down. But yeah, this is my lemonade basil tea. And that is the finished product. It, it is delicious.